The Dnipro River is a home hunter's natural starting point in Ukraine's capital, Kiev. The older part of this city stretches out over the hills in the eastern or right bank, whereas the flatlands of the left bank are primarily residential. The city is subdivided into 10 rayons or districts, each having their own set of civic offices and elected officials. Architecturally, Kiev's downtown derives its grandeur from a mix of elegant Tsarist and neoclassical architecture broken up by the dead serious style of the Soviet era as well as the occasional gleaming modern addition. Broad wild chestnut trees provide shade and are complemented by generous parks throughout the city. Classic turn-of-the-century apartment buildings have both high ceilings and plenty of charm but renters should keep their first impressions at bay, at least until they're in the apartment itself. Common spaces, including foyers, stairwells, and elevators are often crumbling and neglected. Cross the threshold and visitors are surprised to find lovingly renovated spaces, ones that balance restoration needs with more up-to-date standards of comfort. Those in search of newer buildings should venture off the main boulevards. Here, lofty expectations are met by modern constructions. These stylishly sleek apartments are often leased on a rotating basis to foreigners and check off most of the boxes in the no-hassle category. Around half of all of the apartments have their own parking, which is usually found in the central courtyard. For those apartments that don't come with a designated spot, it is sometimes possible to find something suitable within a five to seven minute walk. Underground parking gets rarer the closer one lives to downtown, but may be available in newly constructed buildings. We were very lucky we got good advice on finding a good landlord. That's really important, I think, here. Um, the only problem we had was the apartment we found, for me, didn't feel homely. It was too grand and too ornate. And then we also didn't particularly like the area in the end. Although it was in a great area, it was really central. My husband could walk to work and I could walk to the main street. I could walk to the supermarket. Our kids are really small and I really miss not having any outside space. In the summer you want to be able to step outside. The weather is beautiful and it doesn't matter if you're back in your home country just for you know, July and August, you still have May, June, September, October of great weather. Have a garden. Most homes in Kiev come furnished, in particular apartments of the one or two bedroom variety. If you prefer to bring your own furniture, landlords will sometimes offer to move theirs out, but this should be negotiated well in advance. High-speed internet and satellite TV are available throughout Kiev. If these amenities are not already included in the rental agreement, a move-on relocation consultant can assist you in getting the necessary service contracts. Single expats or those without children often choose to live in the flats close to the center core of the city, near Independence Square. Downtown residents have easy access to both public transportation and work, and this is where entertainment is at its liveliest. Despite a location's proximity to the center, apartments won't necessarily be the only game in town. Families looking to optimize breathing space with the work and school commute may prefer one of the four right bank areas that have single-family homes thrown into the mix. The first two, Pachersk and Holosiv, lie within Kiev city limits. These highly sought after districts are leafy and quiet, yet are within a 15 to 20 minute drive of city center life, not to mention the Pochersk School International. The latter two areas are found just outside the right bank's ring road. A more village feel predominates here with most families living in modern standalone homes. Although commuting into town presents a challenge with traffic bottlenecked on Victory Prospect, residents can find most of what they need nearby. The highly regarded Kiev International School is located in the area, making it a popular choice for expats with school-aid children. I think there's a quite a clear choice on, on property of if you want to live in the city, it will be an apartment, you, you know, usually. And if you want a house, then you, then you live sort of outside of the city. But actually, you just made a really good point, because wherever I've lived overseas before, generally speaking, the expats have a, an area where they tend to, a compound. to live. Yeah. Well, not necessarily a compound, but just a, you know an area or a district. Mm -hmm. But here, people live all over the yeah, place. They're more yes. scattered, that's yeah, true. Really. You have so, to make an effort for after school play dates or oh, yeah. it doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean you really are a taxi taxi service, particularly for the for the young ones. Absolutely. Wherever you choose to live in Kiev, amenities are close at hand. Many neighborhoods will have small shops where you can pick up last minute groceries for dinner. In town, there are several supermarkets that will meet most of your grocery needs. The occasional drive out to suburban hypermarkets like Oshan will allow you to pick up on staples. 
please be sure to take a moment to share your specific housing needs with your Move One consultant. A clear understanding of exactly what you are looking for will help the consultant assemble an offer that meets your needs and will help to avoid wasting time with properties that are not a match for you and your family. We look forward to introducing you to Kiev and to helping you find the right home for your expat adventure.